Das hier ist mein Sektor. Das hier ist das wichtigste Gerät des Küstenwächter. Das Gerät und das Gerät. Überlebensradar. Mayday, Mayday. Hello, can you hear us? Can you hear us? Can you... Okay, over. We are sinking. We are sinking. Hallo? This is the German Coast Guard. We are sinking. We're sinking. What are you thinking about? Hi everyone, Seiko is here. This week's topic, as many of you have asked, how important English in aviation. So let's get started. I want to show you guys a short audio conversation that always makes me think. The conversation happens between JFK Grant, John Fitzgerald Kennedy Grant controller and Air China Flight Group. I think the radio, uh, the guy is on the radio is a first officer. I assume that because the first officer is usually doing the radio job on the ground, but in under some special circumstances, this could be a captain as well. But let's hope that it's a first officer. Before the video, I want to explain something that I hate to criticize my colleagues. Doesn't matter they are Turkish or Chinese, uh, because I'm also making these kind of mistakes almost every flight as well. So, it's always acceptable and understandable if you don't understand any instruction from a traffic controller. Just use the phrase, say again, that's very normal. And I can also feel that how much they were tired after a very long flight, which I assume that somewhere in China, to flight from somewhere in China to New York approximately takes 14 hour flight, roughly. So please keep in mind that and take this audio conversation as an example, okay? Air China 981, make the right turn here at Juliet, join Alpha, hold short of Mike Alpha. Hey, uh, right here at Juliet, hold uh, well, take us to Alpha, hold in that one back. Now continue now, uh, take us now. Make the right turn here at Juliet, join Alpha, hold short of Mike Alpha, Air China 981. Air China 981, right here, join uh, right here, Juliet, join Alpha, uh, hold short in that one back. Okay, I'll say it again. Hold short of Mike Alpha. M A Mike Alpha, not November. Okay, I'll hold short of uh, Mike Alpha. Nine eighty one. Air China nine eighty one. Have they cleared you into the ramp? Roger, ramp to the ramp. Air China nine eighty one. Okay, they have cleared you into the ramp. Air China nine eighty one. Ground. Air China nine eighty one. Kennedy ground. 981, go ahead. Have you been cleared into the ramp? Okay, cleared into the ramp. No, that was a question. Have the ramp people cleared you into the gate? Roger, to the gate there, channel 981. I'll try it again. It's a question. Hold your position. This is a question. Start interrogative. Have you been cleared into your gate? Okay, well, hold, hold here. Okay, how about the question? Have they cleared you into the gate? Hey, uh, tower, uh, ground there, channel 981, uh, we are... Uh, uh, take the number three is open. We are taxi to the number. Air China 981, taxi to the ramp. Roger, taxi to the ramp. Help on chick. Help on chick. Meow. Meow. Even all the excuses are acceptable, still, that's too much. It's too much and I have also found it dangerous because even they don't understand the clearance was given by the traffic controller, they will almost start to move without a clear. Special thanks to ground controllers to for warn them and prevent high possible incidents or maybe accidents on the ground. But keep in mind that a traffic controllers are also human and they can do a mistake as well. And yes, as you can guess, many of the accidents happened do lack of communication skills. 
Mm. So guys, I really wonder, what do you think? Do you think it's a proper? Can you imagine yourself into that position for a second? What would you, what would you think? What would you feel? I just want to push you to think that being a pilot is not about flight airplane. It's also communicates, and it's also one of the basic rules for CRM as well. So I hope you get the idea why important is English in the aviation sector. I'm not gonna make any more comments about video. I just leave it to you. Right, Ponchik? It's not that long actually. Since 1951, English was recommended by ICAO as a common language within the aviation industry. Actually, despite being a recommendation only, IQ English was widely accepted as expected because, as you can imagine, IQ is the biggest player in the aviation industry. But this IQ action couldn't stop the excellence. Respectively, Tenerife Excellence, biggest excellence in the aviation world so far, and secondly, Avianca Flight 52 Excellence, and thirdly, Charky Dodger Excellence, and finally, Uberlingen Excellence were happened due to lack of communications, which is based on English. With the increase of accents, the relevant authorities like ICAO, FAA, CAA or ESA are taking steps to conduct an aviation English test are being started in 2004. I'm not going to into that aviation test actually. I will get there in next videos. She just let herself know. I'm gonna share some links that I found quite useful for both Aviation English and Daily English as well. You will find these links in the description section below. But before say, saying a goodbye, guys, please keep in mind that English is very, very important in aviation sector. So whenever you get a spare time, just make sure you are studying English. It's not a disadvantage that you are non-native speaker, but if you do not study English, this may be a disadvantage. Hope to enjoy the video and I will see you guys next week. Bye now. Say bye, Ponchik. In the aviation sector, in the aviation industry, industry, industry. Your takes approximately, approximately takes 14 hours. Ponchik, how are you doing?